So we're all pretty much used to DAWs on the iPad by now. And we're also used to the limitations they bring with them. They're great tools for whenever you're on the go, but they haven't been able to fully replace your computer DAW. At least not yet. A couple of months ago, Apple finally released a DAW that might just be as good as a full computer DAW. Now, there are a few reasons why this is great. Obviously, we love having a DAW we can just bring with us and just easily whip up ideas. But also, the iPads have gotten really powerful recently. And in many cases, they are as powerful or more powerful than a lot of computers. So why we haven't been able to have video editing software or DAWs that can compete with computer software on the iPad, I'm not really sure. But it seems like Apple has finally stepped up their game and given us a full-fledged DAW for the iPad. So in this video, we're gonna take a closer look at the new Logic Pro app, and we're gonna take a look at the user interface, the recording capabilities, and the more advanced features that you expect to find in more advanced DAWs. So let's head over and take a closer look. Okay, so let's briefly first look at the user interface. So here we have the project screen, and a very cool thing about the Logic Pro app is that you can also use GarageBand projects and import them into Logic Pro which uh, is really useful if you've been using GarageBand in the past and then you have several projects that you now can do way more with because the Logic Pro app has a lot more features. So we can start a new project by pressing this plus right here. And then we have a new screen here where you can start a new project. And it also has a ton of various tutorials that you can choose from. So you have a Logic Pro tour that just towards the entire app. You have more specific ones, like how to play and record software instruments or create beats with step sequencers and so on. So that can be very useful and they're really good and easy to use. You have sound packs that you can download and then you also have live loop grids that uh, you can use in this live loops mode. And then you have two ways of starting a project here, either tracks or live loops. So live loops is like the clip launcher in Ableton Live, similar to that. And then tracks is like a normal DAW in a horizontal timeline with various tracks. So let's start out with a normal timeline and choose tracks. So immediately you get a choice of what sort of track you want to create. So here you can either choose MIDI by using virtual instruments, or you can record directly using audio, you have patterns. And the last one is drummer, which is a feature that was also in GarageBand, where you have a sort of digital drummer that creates a beat for you. So let's just start out simple with a MIDI track. Now here is your main user interface. So it looks very familiar to other DAWs. Most DAWs have this layout. And one thing that's very good about this app is that it has a very clean user interface so there's not a lot of things competing about space and anything you need can be pulled up or removed by these menu items down here. So you have the on-screen keyboard right here, the mixer, you have the plugin view right here, and then you have the piano roll right here, this pencil symbol. Over here you have the individual fader for each track. You have some general information about each track right here. And then finally, you have the browser for all the instruments and loops and samples. So now when we know the user interface, we can start putting together some music. Let's start out with just uh, using some samples. So we'll go into the browser here. And then we can go to samples and let's say we want some drums. We can go to drums here and we can go, for example, search for kicks and we can preview them. So if I, for example, want to use this one, just add it to the timeline and then it will create a new track. So here you will have this one kick. We can just make a little kick pattern, very simple. Okay, so then we can add some snares. And if we want to add some hats, search for hats. I 
Okay, so there we have a very simple beat. But now what if we want to add some virtual instruments? Well, then we can use either the built-in instruments or we can use other third-party VSTs. So if we create a new track, I can show you what we can do. For example, if we go to instruments, then you have here audio units, then you can choose your third-party instruments. So these are the companies. So if we, for example, go for a Moog, maybe we want some bass, go with a model D, and then we create. Now, you'll notice that we have a new track. And then if we go into the plugin view right here, we see this is the module. So it doesn't really say much, but if we press it, we get the, the third party plugin interface. Okay, so we've got this plugin lo loaded in here, and then you can change presets here. Currently have it on A or base. Sounds like this. So obviously you can use the on-screen keyboard right here, but you can also connect a MIDI keyboard. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use this Lumi uh, keyboard because it has BLE. I don't actually love this keyboard, but I do like to use it for iPads because you only have that one port and then that way you don't have to deal with dongles and adapters. And now it's at 120 and I'm gonna turn down the tempo because I'm not really that great of a keyboard player. We go to maybe 80 and we'll see if I'm able to play that. So I think maybe we can use this or salvage it at least. And we'll pull it up to 120 again. Let's see how bad it is. So you can hear that it works, but it's kind of sloppy. So you have a lot of features here where you can quantize in the info section right here. You can quantize your playing. So let's do classic quantize and see what happens. Okay, so that's a lot better. Now let's add another instrument. I can use Tall Uno LX, which emulates the classic Juno synth. So again, we go to plugin right here. And then we go double click here. And then we have this uh, Juno synth. So let's find the preset. For example, this one. And then we try and record that. I'm going to try and do it in tempo. Okay, and then we have a little beat here. Now, what if you want to record an external instrument? Well, that's also very easy, but you'll probably want to use an audio interface. So in this case, I'm going to use this iRig Pro that has only one input, which is perfect for you know a guitarist or someone who uh, only needs one mono input. So I'm just going to plug this in. So now it's plugged in, and then I'm just going to hook it up to a guitar. Okay, so I got my guitar here and it's plugged into the audio interface. So what we have to do then is to create a new track and then this time use audio. Then you can see that the iRig interface is registered as the source. So we press that and then there's nothing happening and that's because we have to turn on monitoring. So if we go here and then go to I, then you can see here that we have some light. Okay, and there we got a little guitar part. So you can hear the guitar sounds very sharp and we can do something about that by adding different plugins. So you can add audio effects. 
can do, for example, a little bit of add a filter. You can add some delay. Add a little bit of uh, reverb. We can add some delay to the Juno as well. And now a very important thing in most DAWs is automation and that's usually very finicky in most DAWs, but in Logic Pro, it's actually pretty intuitive, especially if you're used to Logic Pro, obviously, but also for people coming from other DAWs, like I come from Ableton Live primarily, and uh, it's uh, pretty intuitive. You just go in to the track, find out what you want to uh, automate. So. You can go to each plugin and choose what parameter you want to do there. Uh, and you can go, let's say we want to go to the delay and we want to increase the feedback over time. We want to go to the pencil tool. Let me just drag it up. And we can hear what it sounds like. So that's very extreme, obviously. And obviously you can do way more than I'm showing you right here, uh, but this is just a, a general overview but you can also set up buses and sends and receives and do pretty much everything you can do in your primary DAW. Now let's take a little look at the loop screen as well. Now this will be familiar for a lot of people and a lot of DAWs have this feature. And for many it will probably be natural to think of the clip view in Ableton Live. So this is a horizontal view instead of Ableton's vertical view and you can create these little clips here. I have I'm just a little silly hip hop beat uh, I was messing around with here. So we can just uh, activate one clip here. For example, this first one. Then you can add another. Then you can make an arrangement on the fly. So that's a good way to just quickly jot down ideas and mess around with an arrangement. And it's very easy to, uh, to just record something. You just press this record button right here. And then you just press whatever slot you want to. And then we'll start recording. And it's as easy as that. Now let's say you want to settle on an arrangement, then that's very easy as well, because you have always access to the regular timeline view, and it's right here. So you can easily switch between them. And you see this little timeline symbol right here? That means that you can record your performance directly from this clip view to the timeline view. So then when you have clips you're happy with, it's much easier to just simply record or trigger your um, clips and then record that directly into the timeline rather than copy pasting from this view into the timeline view. So let's see an example of that. We'll just press record.
And now, if everything was done right, there should be an arrangement here. So you can see it's all grayed out. The reason for that is because some of these are still being controlled by the clip view. And the, reason, the way you can see which one is uh, active in the clip view or the timeline view is by these symbols right here. If the arrow to the right is active, you can see that that activates it in the timeline view. And vice versa, if the arrow to the left is active, it is active in the clip view. You saw here I just messed around and uh, triggered a few random samples and now we have like this very simple arrangement that we can uh, polish and finesse more in this view. Now once you have a song or a track that you're happy with you can easily uh, export it in different uh, ways. You do that by just pressing the name of the song and then export and here you get a few different options. You can choose between the entire project length or you can choose uh, start and end point if you want it uncompressed or compressed and also if you want to export the stems. So that's very useful and something that we come to expect from any DAW. So that was a little deep dive into the Logic Pro app by Apple. As you can tell, I really like it and it has a lot of what you need in a DAW. And especially because it's very complete and you can do almost everything you can do on a computer. Which I feel like is about time. Because mobile devices have gotten so powerful now that there hasn't really been a good reason why we should only have to deal with simplified software. Obviously there are problems with an iPad. None of us will probably completely replace our computer with an iPad for now, especially with things that you need a bigger screen for and iPads are still a little limited that way. But if you're traveling or if you're somewhere where you don't have your computer available, you can do so much now with your iPad. And this Logic Pro app really closes the gap quite a lot between music production on a computer and on an iPad. Now, what are some bad things? Well, one of them is just the real estate, having everything on a small screen. Like I mentioned, they, they're doing a really good job of keeping the user interface clean, but it's still limited and it's still an iPad. So that's still something you have to work around. Uh, another thing is that this is a subscription model, like everything these days on the App Store. So you do have to pay a subscription and it's either monthly or yearly. And there is a small discount for the yearly option. Most apps these days are subscription based and it's just a model that is good for them and not so good for us. And that's something we have to deal with. So what do you think about this app? I would love to hear if you are using it or if you're going to use it. Also, if there's something I missed in this video, please leave it in the comment section. And if you're interested in an app that's more loop-based and more performance-based, that can do a lot of the same things as Logic Pro can, you should definitely check out this video right here, where I do an in-depth review of the Loopy Pro app. So we'll see you in the next one.